Hi there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at, well, my most recent article on how we can retrieve the current user or even another user's ID. Why do we need this ID? Well, up until now, everything I've demonstrated to you has always been to work with the current user. So I'm working with my email box. I'm using my calendar. I'm using my contacts. But what if we want to interact with another individual? Assuming this permissions have been set up for you to do that, the first aspect of being able to interact and do these types of things is you have to have the user's ID. And hence why this article today is let's retrieve the user's ID. So basically there are calls where in the URL at times, um, if you have an ID, you will be able to use that ID to then interact with those elements. So before diving into the code specifically, let's just look at the Entra Admin Center, just to demonstrate that, you know, if you don't want to go through the code, you can do this manually as well. It's not very difficult. So you log into the Admin Center under Users, you click All Users here. As you can see, you'll get a listing of all your users on your account. You simply click on whichever account you're interested in. So let's say this one here. And you'll see listed under object ID, the ID. Now this is what we need when we're working with the Graft API, if we're not working with the current account. You'll also see here, you can do other configurations and whatnot, but for our needs, what we're after, what I'm talking about today, the ID is what they refer to here as the object ID. Okay, with that out of the way, now let's take a look at the code. Before going any further, I just have to ask you if you don't mind, like, share, subscribe. It truly is the only way that I can continue to make these videos. Um, and I appreciate any support you can give me on that front. Now back to the code. Well, on my article, I have two different functions, basically. The first one, which is the simplified version, it goes and looks at me, the current user the currently logged in user to retrieve the ID. Now, what am I doing? It's really not very complex, but we're going to hit the URL and we're going to ask it to return the ID. Now, if we want to look at another user, well, in that case, instead of looking at the me, we're going to look at our users and we're going to apply a filter to find that person. So I have here different filters and this could be expanded upon. I'm using currently four or I have the option of using up to four, but you can add even more. You could be searching by all sorts of other fields, uh, columns, but these are the ones that made sense to me. So that's what I worked on, but you can easily expand upon this filter section to add more functionality and make it even more versatile. And once again, we're gonna go through and we're gonna retrieve the ID that it returns. So I know I've jumped through this very quickly. Let's jump over to VBA where it will be a little bit easier to follow along. Couple things to note. The first thing here is um, I am now integrated, if you're not familiar, with uh, Tim Hall's JSON converter module library, okay, for working with JSON and parsing it. Um, it can be done through VBA, and I was previously doing that, and up until now, VBA was fine for parsing it. But as I'm moving forward and I'm getting more collections and more objects, um, this library just simplifies the day-to-day -day operations of extracting information. So I've started to implement this. It's an excellent uh, resource to consider if you haven't already looked at it. The second thing I'm going to very briefly touch upon, I have an article on my website about it, but I recently discovered an issue um, when I was developing this whole module here for contacts, which I will get into in a later video. But long story short, what I've discovered is using the HTTP send request, which I originally did, which was based off the MS XML, XML HTTP library, um, there's an issue with caching. And sadly, the caching headers do not work. They're not respected. So long story short is you're going to see now in my code, and I have to go and update 
all my code throughout, but we should be abandoning this, okay, abandoning this guy, and instead switching over to using um, either the uh, server, HTTP 6, or if you prefer, you can use the Win uh, HTTP, okay? One of those two, at least the header is respected if you add things like this to it, the cache control, and then uh, the, the request that we make work properly. What was happening just very quickly is um, I would do a search for a contact, for instance, to go get an ID. And if there were multiple matching individuals, I'd only get one returned, even though I knew there were multiple. And it had to do with this cache control. And the minute I managed to switch over to an alternate technique, suddenly I was getting all the entries. Um, so basically if I go and add a new entry, it wouldn't be visible. If I delete it, it didn't show up as being deleted and it all had to do with caching. So, uh, yeah, just be careful. You want to use an alternate method. You either want to use the server XML HTTP, or like I say, the win HTTP with those two things out of the way, we can now dive into the actual code itself. Now let's look at the simplified one. Quite simply, it's a simple function. You don't need to supply any arguments because it's just going to look at the currently logged in user. What's it going to do? Well, we're going to hit this URL, okay? And we're going to, from that URL, what gets returned as a response, because it's going to return to us the information it has about that user, which is me. And from that, we're going to use that json library converter we're going to parse the response returned to us and we're going to extract from it just the id because that's all i'm after and by doing that we end up as you're going to see in two seconds we do that we get back here the id as simple as that so we have our ID for the current user. Now, what if we want to go and get another user's ID? Now, we can't use the me. I'm going to skip over the following function. I may leave it in the demo. I'm not 100% sure. It's very similar to what I'm going to demonstrate to you today, but it was for extracting other information relative to a user. So if we needed to, let's say, search for a person's name and we wanted to retrieve their email address or perhaps a phone number or something like that. But today we're talking about IDs. This guy here will do that for you. And basically, we have the option here of searching by four different criteria. Now, first name and last name, we have to be careful. That may not be enough to be unique. And that's why I added mobile address or email address, because if you have those, those are unique within an organization. And if you search upon one of those, you're bound to get your ID. So just keep in mind that just searching by name can be a little dangerous depending on the you know, the organization you're working with in here. But basically now, instead of looking in the me grouping, we're looking in the users. We're looking at all the registered users. And we're gonna build up a filter based on whatever information is optionally entered by the user to perform the search. So we're just gonna build up this filter. Now, what it is, is you have to know the names of the different properties, the different uh, fields of data that you can search upon. So here you got given name, surname, mobile phone, mail, and then whatever was supplied as the search criteria. Now, one thing to be aware of is searching the users is particular. I don't know why it was made this way, but let's say to for instance, search upon a phone number, the mobile phone number, we have to add this expression to our URL, this count equals true, and we have to add an extra header to our request that says consistency level eventual. Don't ask me why Microsoft made things like this. I didn't get it. You know, if you just search by given name and surname, none of that is required. But when you start adding on this extra information, it becomes required. It doesn't hurt to always have it in the request. So that's why here I'm not doing all sorts of validations to include it sometimes and not other times. Um, I'm just including it. It always will be there. It doesn't hurt the request. The other thing to note is a lot of phone numbers have like that plus one. Well, we have to massage, <laughs> replace the plus symbol with its representation here of percent to be for this to work. Otherwise, the search will fail every time. You'll never get a result back. 
it um, yeah so it's one of these another oddities that you just need to be aware of but basically we build up these filters then we append the filter to this base URL we append this count that we are now required to be able to apply certain filters and lastly we add a select to it to just return the ID okay it's it's just like doing any other SQL we want to restrict as much data as possible and only we'll return what we truly need there's no point returning emails and phone numbers and names and addresses and whatever else is included in the person's profile for no reason okay uh, this will accelerate the process reduce the amount of data being pushed and pulled so as much as possible in pretty much any request we do um, this is a becoming a, you know a best practice in reality we're going to send out our request once again not forgetting to I add this extra uh, header that we are required to have and then we're going to come through here now what am I doing this one I'm doing a little differently we're going to parse the returned response and then I'm going to look at how many values did I get returned in that response so if I got no values returned it means no match was found so I included a message box is it up to you if you want to have it pop up in the user's face or not and I'm setting that it returns a zero value okay so I if I'm going to call this in something else I'll have to now trap that if it returns zero we have a problem no match was found I'm going to skip over the one case for a second we're going to skip over here more than one value was returned this would be the case of well, let's say we search by a first name or last name or both and there are multiple people that match so now we've got multiple matching users I have no way of knowing which ID you are truly after so what I'm doing is I'm setting the return value to this minus 9999 it could be any value you choose but it's just another way that I can trap the fact that it didn't return that ID I was after that there's been a problem and that I can with this value understand what the problem was that there are multiple matches I included here just for illustrative purposes this whole debug process that will iterate and will output here in your immediate window all the matches okay so it may help you dissect and try to troubleshoot and understand a little bit but if we've done our job right and we've provided sufficient criteria so we get back a unique single value so we're going to be on case one then all we do is we parse out of the value the ID and we return that ID so we perform our search we get back one value yes we want that ID we bring back the ID so let me just demonstrate to you for a second if we were to come here we could do something like this and I could do a search for let's say uh, Danielle Pino be nice if I put the quotes and there you go I get my ID so those are the two approaches depending on what you're trying to achieve whether it be return your personal ID or search for another user's ID but as you can see very simple to achieve and uh, yeah just keep in mind now that I've implemented this uh, module for uh, JSON parsing to simplify the code um, I, I had done as you can see here in my code I had originally done this and it works fine for the case of one but I then wanted to be able to iterate and pull out data a little simpler so it just made more sense to implement such a library that you know gives you the capacity to do this type of thing much easier don't get me wrong I could have done the code here I could have added more code and more code and I could have created more function to do it but yeah you know doing this in every function every call I'm ever going to need just made more sense to have a reusable module and that's it guys it's really the level of complexity here you've got now two functions that you can call very easily you can apply whatever you want um, do note you know if you're searching by phone number you got to have it in the exact format that it was in, in, input in um, I, I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna try to look into other approaches of searching for a number because you know we, we have so many different formats right um, in my area let's say um, you know you could have things like this 
You could have the be good if I wrote it properly, but you, you get the idea. There's so many different formats and how do we go about performing a search that would manage to search regardless of how it was input. I just want who, who has it. And I don't know, did they put brackets? Did they put a plus one? Did they put hyphens or no hyphens? And so because Microsoft isn't in form enforcing any formatting, this is a little trickier to search on the mobile number. So if you know your organization follows a pattern, okay, you're, you're good as gold, you're good as rain here to do that search. But if not, you could search for this and it returns nothing because it was input like that. Um, so just keep that in mind too. The format of the phone number is critical. Um, but like I say, I'm going to see if there isn't some way of performing a like a search or something along those lines. I haven't delved into that any further at this point. Um, the one thing I can say is if you've got the email address, that's the way to go because it will always return back the ID. It's unique. So um, that's probably my biggest advice would be use this guy here because it will get you the proper ID every single time. Okay, I'm stopping here. Um, this was just an intro into the matter, how you get that ID, because it is required if you're trying to do certain advanced automation with a Microsoft Graft API. Um, and then, uh, like I said, to sneak peek really, but I will be re releasing a video. I'm not quite sure when I have all the code. It's just a question of, you know, wrapping up a video here. Um, but basically I will do a video where I'm going to go over all these things, creating, uh, contacts, updating contacts, deleting contacts, creating folders, listing folders, all these different things that we need to do, uh, in, in the graph API to manage all the contacts or, uh, when you're in Outlook, uh, people, they call them people, uh, but they're contacts and you can create a whole hierarchy of folder structures to hold them. So you could have your personal contacts in one folder, your business contacts and another family members in a third, you know, like you can organize this or you can dump them all together in the main root contact folder. You know, all that's up to you, obviously, but the functionality is available through the graph rest. API, and this will be something I explore in a future video. Um, thank you for watching through and making it this far. It is greatly appreciated. And like I said, if you don't mind, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.